Imagine you are in a DevOps interview and the interviewer asks you about designing a system for a mobile application which connects to 50 different microservices which performs different functions like authentication, getting the data, protecting the identity and almost 1 million requests are coming per day and the interviewer expects you to design it. So now the moment we see this, we try to jump on a conclusion that uh, we either might have to use the gateway, API gateway or a load balancer, it could be a reverse proxy. But the problem is we do not understand the exact differences between these three. And most importantly, when to use API gateway, when to use load balancer and when to use reverse proxy. So in this video, let's understand it with a real life example again uh, to make things simpler and then we will try to break down the different use cases when you have to go for API gateway or a load balancer or a reverse proxy and most importantly all three. So watch this video till the very end because this could come in your next interview as well. So let's get started. So friends let's start with a real life example of a, an international airport like Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi. Okay, one system which manages uh, the traffic coming into the airport is the parking system. It has no intelligence. It is simply seeing the traffic flow and it is, you know, just sending this traffic to maybe level one, level two or level three parking lots based on whatever is the availability. The second one is the security check-in. So now security check-in is slightly different because whoever is coming, security check-in is first of all checking its passport, their valid tickets. So this could be your authentication, your authorization, enter the airport. Then they will also tell you that from which route you have to go to a specific airline, which can be your routing. And at the same time, they are managing multiple airlines. To simplify it, let's focus on international only. So British Airways, Etihad, Qatar, Turkish Airlines or Emirates, all these kind of international airlines are coming in. Okay. So security check-in is taking care of those. Now the third one is a very special one, which could be your immigration. So your immigration counter is used only for international flights and here every passenger has to come in show their passport tell the reason why they are leaving the country for what reason but at the same time everything is taken care by these uh, you know immigration officers and the airport staff or the airline staff don't get involved in the immigration okay they cash uh, so when you give them the passport they cash in all the details they already have the details of your you know when you previously went out of the country they then update the details and everything so that the next time when you come in all that information will be ready here but this is a very special requirement in domestic flights you will not need immigration but this is a very special case wherein you're flying international and you're leaving the country then you need immigration okay so now let's try to connect these dots okay so you know when you are only distributing the load one particular server getting so many requests and you are distributing it without applying a too much intelligence then it is a load balancer situation then security check-in is similar to api gateway because right now you are not only distributing the load that's not the problem the problem is to identify who needs what and where to route that request so api gateway is about a central point from which you are distributing requests to different microservices okay for that you need API gateway and API gateway will authenticate and authorize the request. Uh, API gateway will make sure that it is getting routed to the correct service. And uh, once it gets routed to a correct service, then the load balancer could further distribute it. So one service could have multiple backend systems as well. So for example, a request comes to API gateway and it routes it to, for example, this particular microservice this microservice can have a load balancer here which will have multiple backend systems distributing the traffic to okay so don't get confused between routing and load balancing so this is kind of api gateway problem then immigration could be more like specialized service which can be your reverse proxy what is reverse proxy in reverse proxy basically you are hiding the identity of your backend system Okay, first of all, then you are also caching all the static kind of content so that the performance experience could be better. Then you are also doing SSL TLS termination. So basically, whenever you are sending any web traffic, it is get encrypted using SSL certificates. If you don't know much about that, you go watch my SSL video or you can also watch my cryptography video where we have talked about certificate lifecycle management. Very, very detailed video. So SSL TLS certificate will be terminated and from there on this request will go further. 
but you don't need all this everywhere that is the main thing so this is the reverse proxy situation okay wherein you are hiding the identity you don't want your uh, backend systems to get disturbed for example even immigration don't let the airlines get involved into all this okay now take it with a pinch of salt you might get confused if you just imagine like for like just understand it for your basic understanding okay we'll go into the details so very soon so we got this thing okay we know a bit about what a load balancer is what is api gateway what is reverse proxy but what if i tell you that you don't need all three every time that is the main thing that is your system design okay so let's understand the scenarios where you would need one two or all three let's understand that so that you can apply that brain because today almost every product can offer you all three so then why you need different services or different uh, systems you can have one system which manages it all no so we'll understand when you have to distribute it or when you can keep it consolidated so let's go into that so let's take the first scenario the first scenario is there is a new small food delivery app uh, startup okay which is trying to serve its customer so it is a very small startup which only has three different microservices users restaurants and orders so basically there is a mobile app and uh, using this mobile app user can use this quick mobile app to order food in the local area very small startup just trying to build up do they need all three no i think they can easily do all three of these things using only api gateway because api gateway will give you a basic level of security it will also give you the routing towards different microservices and it can also do load balancing to certain extent so you don't need to put in all three and make it a complex system it is a very simple request you are only getting few thousand requests per day okay so you don't need to add all kind of load balancers and reverse proxies in here so that's scenario number 1 so now let's go to scenario 2 now the stakes are becoming higher we have moved from a scenario of a simple food delivery startup to uh, something which is a medium scale like big basket or grofers and now the stakes are higher because now we are spanning across multiple cities our user base is crossing for example 50000 users in total and our request are touching 1 million request per day okay so in all that scenario now we are getting into a complex architecture where we are not only having three microservices but almost 20 to 25 microservices because we are now spreading our business in that sense the flow would be like you know any user request will first go to the api gateway and then after api gateway gets that request for a certain microservices then every microservice so this could be microservices 1 and it will be its load balancer ms2 lb ms3 lb okay so for example if it is a user service user microservices then there will be a load balancer managing and distributing service to the back end servers of this microservice and similarly for this one and this one okay so you you understand the point right so now the load balancer role is coming here so now the load balancers are distributing the traffic within each microservice and the api ga gateways receiving the request from not one user for multiple users and multiple other applications as well okay so api gateway and load balancer will work separately in this particular scenario okay because now the stakes are higher we can't just risk our api gateway do it all because what if api gateway goes down okay because of too many request we have to also now introduce concepts like rate limiting what is rate limiting that because the number of requests are increasing we will put a filter or a benchmark that one particular user or one particular system could not send more than these many requests to the api gateway api gateway said no sorry boss you are done for the day you can't just ping me and keep pinging me throughout the day you are done you can only come up tomorrow because your quota has expired so that is called as rate limiting which api gateway provides and the load balancer will continue to do its job of distributing the traffic so this is the scenario 2 where we have now got a separate api gateway and a load balancer now let's go to scenario 3 now coming to scenario 3 now, uh, now we are talking about enterprise scale like a food delivery app or food ordering app as zomato because now it has more than 50 plus microservices 10 million request per day and it is a pan india application used by everyone from every corner of the country just take that as a reference now it is big the stakes are higher so now what you can do you can introduce nginx reverse proxy here what it will do it can do ssl tls termination okay it can do caching of restaurant images or food menus so that if someone is trying to browse a particular restaurant nearby 
Spotify that will not come back from the backend server. It will all be statically cached in this particular stage for the reverse proxy. So reverse proxy will do this job. Then will come the API gateway because you know now that API gateway will manage all the requests coming and going to different microservices, 50 different microservices. For simplicity, I'm just keeping it simple. You know by now what I'm talking about. So API gateway, then the load balancer and then the microservice, okay? So now in this particular situation, when the stakes are really high, we have introduced reverse proxy separately. Remember in scenario one, everything can be, could have been done by API gateway as we went to a medium scale business, load balancer was introduced separately. And now for a full blown application, we are also keeping reverse proxy uh, separate. So this is how you have to answer this in the interview. You have to understand the stakes. You have to understand what kind of requirements you have and how big the overall scale of this requirement is. And based on that, you have to decide. There is no right and wrong. Remember guys, even for a startup, you can put a reverse proxy, a load balancer and an API gateway. But is it really needed? Won't it burn money on cloud? Is it not an overkill? That's how you think as an architect. You have to think and solve problems but at the same time, whatever solution you are giving should be reasonable, should be feasible and should be resilient, performant. All those kind of things should be there in your solution. So now with all these different differences, let's summarize our understanding with a comparison table and digest all this information. So let's do a quick comparison, guys. Uh, the core purpose for uh, all three. So the main job for an API gateway is to manage multiple API services. For load balancer, it is distribute traffic and for reverse proxy, it is about optimizing your web application by caching in this content and boosting the performance. Okay, the scope different services. So multiple microservices, that is the scope of API gateway. Load balancer works within the scope of a same service. So you will have load balancer working within the same service distributing the load. And here the scope is a single web application. Authentication advanced. You can have JSON, you can have OAuth authentication. I have made a video on OAuth if you want to watch that, uh, a good video. Load balancer, basic authentication. Uh, you can keep in here and even in reverse proxy, you can have basic authentication. A smart routing, very well done by API. API gateway it exactly knows which microservices needs to contact to and that's how it does it very nicely at load balancer level it also can do uh, routing based on different load balancer mechanisms I have made a detailed video on application load balancers where we have talked about uh, you know caching and what kind of routing a load balancer can do but at an application load balancer level, yes, but at a network load balancer, no, because at network load balancer level, the intelligence is not there. Here also, you can have some limited uh, functionality for smart routing. For caching, API responses are cached uh, at the gateway, basic sticky sessions are cached uh, at the load balancer and advanced caching can happen in reverse proxy if you are really trying to boost the performance of your website. OSI layer. Layer 7, HTTP, HTTPS, JSON, REST, all this works at layer 7 for API gateway. For this one, load balancer can have can be at a layer 7 and layer 4. So layer 7 application load balancer, layer 4 where you have TCP UDP protocol, you have network load balancer and even for reverse proxy, you have layer 7. So some basic differences with a caveat, let me put it as a disclaimer as well. Don't take these comparison table as is because there would be scenarios where one load balancer with some configuration can do multiple things, okay? But at a generic level, this comparison gives you a good idea of when to choose what and which particular uh, technology or functionality of a load balancer versus API gateway or a reverse proxy would be useful in a certain situation. But with uh, different customizations, you can enhance the capacity and the capability of each of these. Okay, so take that uh, into your consideration when you are seeing this table and also understand that we have only talked about microservices, but load balancers can work in standard, uh, you know, three tier architectures as well. So that is a different use case. We are right now focusing on loosely coupled microservices architecture and trying to understand how these three fits in. So with that said, I, I hope you learned something about API gateway versus load balancer versus reverse proxy. And next time when you go for an interview and you, if you are given a scenario like this, you will be more confident to answer, you know, how to deploy these services, whether you need a reverse proxy, whether you need a load balancer or, uh, you know, can, can this all be done by API gateway questions like that. And that will help you ace your next interview, hopefully. So wishing you all the best. Keep learning, keep sharing. And yes, keep growing. Bye for now.